Well, check it out, y'all. We got what you need. We're all living in apartments, condos, vans. Well, dude, even you can have a studio. A studio in a box. Yes, we can help you with that right here at Blind Knowledge. We work on your budget, and we figure out your measurements. We'll get you the best sound for the best price. Let me know, 877-237-1143 or at blindknowledge.com. Yep. To that party with Boondocks tonight? What? Of course, man. The Jamboree, get done. Shindig, we're here, party with blossoms. Woo! Guess up the general lead in. Aye! Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Maniacal Music Musings. I'm your host, Jeremy, as always. But tonight, you can call me Bone Snapper. Leading the March of the Ogres, we head to the Call of Void with our fists full of teeth and face the monster prophet of bloody regrets. Dude's an asshole. Speaking of assholes, my co-host. Though he will kick dough with the Black Eyed Kids and is known for burning down the landlord's house which is technically his own house, so that's a whole fuck situation. He'll tell you the sober truth of his careless psycho symphony, leading the warriors of light through Odin's saga. He was born with, he was born from a womb with a view underneath the cross sticker. It's the highway or hangman for him, but you can't kill terror, so he hides beneath odorous Ungress's phallus and says, this is my night. Chancy motherfucking Grife. Hi. And you knew I was bringing this phallus back in this shit, finally. You knew it. We'll get into that later. But uh, And we are so happy to be back, folks. Your users missed you all dearly. And we, of course, are joined by a guest. But this guest, you may recognize him. You may recognize his voice if you're just listening. He is, of course, the mo- infamous Malachi from many of our brackets. A.K.A. Captain Scott from my po- other podcast, Global Strangeness. And he is also the founder of birdsaren'treal.com. And I'm Flyer. not the founder. I'm not the founder. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Loyal supporter, loyal supporter. He's also a loyal supporter of flatearthisreal.com as well. So, and yes, birds are real, Scott. But we are happy to have Scott here because he's been wanting to do this for a while, and I've been wanting to get him on for a while, and it just time it happened. And boy, did he bring us a CD. But we'll get to that in a Bit. Well, actually, fuck it. We'll get to it now. Everybody who knows me knows what Global Strangers is, so we don't have to go into what that is even. We could do it at the end a little bit. So, what did, Scott... Oh, go ahead. What, uh, I wanted to know how many of these you guys have done, right? Because you're not picking, like, your top-tier albums anymore, are you? You're trying to get, like, new stuff in there every week? Chancy, I uh, think I feel a tad insulted here. <laughs> No, I mean, it's a legitimate, I mean, it's a legitimate question because we've had a few episodes. I mean, I've literally got like that much actual, yeah. no, like notebook paper of, of episodes that we've done. And these aren't even all the episodes. I didn't start documenting them until a few of them down. Um, I mean, honestly, it's not really, it's not really like a <laughs> sub tier kind of situation. I, I'll explain my process because I have a whole just weird process to go with it. It's kind of funny. <laughs> it's not that weird, but um, I mean, but it's no. I mean, trust me. These I have a lot of top CDs. I haven't even begin to touch all of them yet, and it's more just what is called for in each episode. That's the thing. It's what's called for in each episode. Fuck you, Chancy. It's what's called for in each episode. <laughs> but. So, like, 15 years down the road, you're not going to be doing, like, MC Hammer episodes or anything? Might have to 15 years down the road. I don't know about <laughs> that shit. That's, that's a lot of albums at that point. We, ooh. I mean, I keep saying I got to throw together a list of – I got to throw together, like, an Excel – like, a Google Excel sheet of, like, the, the albums we've done already and just keep updating it every freaking episode. But I haven't done that yet. That's going to be a process. Well, not that bad a process, but it'll be a process. A lot of typing. But – 
I gotta get that done so that we don't start bringing repeat albums eventually because it's already almost happened a couple of times. I had to be like, buddy, you brought that one a couple episodes ago. Like, How does that work? Yeah. Or I guess you guys talk beforehand though, huh? Uh, yeah, I mean, we we obviously know all three CDs as soon as we as soon as as soon as the guest tells us <laughs> our CD, we both know it immediately, and and then from there we both know each other's CD, of course, because we have to. So has any of your guests brought like a uh, tried to bring the same CD, or how's that work? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, um, I've had I've had a few guests that like they'll say like a one CD, and I'll be like, oh, we already had someone bring that on, or like, oh, we already did that, and then they'll either pick another CD or sometimes they'll send me like a list of like four or five CDs and they're like, all right, which ones of these haven't you guys done yet? I'll, I'll bring whichever one you want, which one or one of these has been done. And sometimes it's only one or two of them. Sometimes it's all of them that have never been done. So I'm just like, your pick. We never done any of those. Has, have, is there like a most popular? Like, have you got uh, one that like comes, everybody tries to do it? No, I don't know about no. I was gonna say I don't know about everybody, but I definitely remember somebody trying to bring uh, Wu Tang Clan's uh, into the Thirty Six Chambers. Oh yeah, he yeah because yeah, uh, yeah he someone we canceled we did an episode and they couldn't make it, so we just did our CD our two CDs and then we brought them back on the next week and they they wanted to bring the CD chance brought the previous week, so it didn't fucking work. But and we've had I mean other than that, not really. I mean a couple of people have tried to bring uh, some of the '90s metal chance he's brought on. Like they try to bring that on, and I'll be like, "Oh, we already did that." Like different Soundgarden CDs or shit like that. But and I don't mean cool. shit in a bad way. I just mean shit in a general sense. Do you but, guys have a pretty close uh, music taste? Oh God, no! Oh no! It, 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 it's a it's, it's a, a circle. It's a circle diagram. Like, it, it meets in the middle, uh, but there's a lot of outside area. I think he means Venn diagram, but you know. Whatever. A circle di- it's a circle diagram. <laughs> I ain't no fucking geometrist. <laughs> I do that. I do. All right. What uh, Scott, I'm dying to know. You brought us an album, and I'm I am this is one of those ones where I really want to fucking know what made you want to bring this CD. It's one of my favorite. Well, actually, Rail Yard Ghosts Christmas album is one of my favorite CDs of all time. But this one's up there. I uh, I don't know. A lot of sentimental shit. Like when I was a kid, first becoming an adult, a lot of it makes sense. Fell into the whole anarchistic uh, belief system. And can't shake it off, right? Just changed it from libtard anarchoism to uh, anarcho-capitalism. So some of it still makes sense. The hell's that going there for? Oh, to- my- oh, Scott, I just figured out why the volume wasn't fucking working for me. Huh. Because it, it was coming through my computer, not my headphones. That makes sense. Yes, it does. And it like to be fair, when I when I started listening to like folk punk, we had already had kids and shit, but like, you know, the beginnings of this stuff started happening when I was out on the road and I actually had there's this dude Roach in Berkeley that wanted to start a band with me and my buddy Jeremy from the carnival and wanted to do the whole folk punk thing and that could have been an option. But uh didn't happen. So funny enough, I was gonna ask if you remember this band at one point. Because it says they go over the United States and they just like pretty much draft people from like whatever the area they're in to like play with play with them. Well, this is the model for our podcast, Global Strangeness. That was my original idea. It's just like everybody's part of the podcast and nobody's part of the podcast. It's fucking perfect. Didn't work out that way. (laughs) It didn't. 13 people down to four in the first like couple days that you started that chat. So Yeah. But we got, you know, Bruce and Michael now. So Oh yeah. Now we got hope. Still hope. We got we got four man, we got five people. I don't at this point, we can't have any more. It's going to go way too fucking long. <laughs> it's already getting long at this point. So it's like, ugh. but I, you forget, I'm on the East Coast out of all of you. And I had the fucking, it's latest for me out of all of you. So by the time we get done, it's like 11 o'clock and I'm like struggling to stay awake at the, at the freaking table here. So it's like, ugh. so what were you guys' honest thoughts on this? I know this is like a very selective well, taste of f- music. First things first, uh, just for dexterity. What was the name of the album and the band? 
You Higher say. Earth by Rail Yard Ghosts. Chancy, what do you think of it? Well, I mean, I, uh, sorry, I wanted to write this down because I wasn't sure what, whether, like, whether, what was the album name and what was the artist name. I, I wasn't sure how to take this album. It, it was, uh, it was something. I I really liked I liked the I, I was able to pull eight total songs, but I couldn't rank them. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things where like the songs that I liked off of the album I really liked, and the songs that didn't hit fucking missed entirely. Yeah. But I- like it was one of those things like I love their usage of dissonant notes whether it be through vocalization or the instruments themselves, that was something I found to be quite interesting. And I didn't even know that there was such a thing as uh, uh, like, what does you say? F- uh, folk punk or punk folk or whatever it is. Well, yeah, they like to be called like black grass or thrash black grass. Or okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. I was like, I was like, I had never heard no acoustic black metal before, but Jesus Christ, you know, <laughs> That was I was for it. Like I was here for it. I was like, you know, it's fucking weird, man. I was like, it made me honestly when I was listening to it, I was like, you know, I kind of wish that I would have used my nuclear option because I well, since he's gone, but he can still hear me. I have this secret little album tucked away for whenever like he just sends something that's just total fucking garbage. This is an album that I I couldn't even get through listening to. The Uh one I'm my nuclear my nuclear option i got you. it's just i wanted to do it because i i was like dude i was like dude malachi's fucking with us like he's fucking with us <laughs> i don't know how he found this fucking thing because it's got like i i the reason i felt that way was because it's got skits on it and i love those i usually rank those like in my top five either at number one or any of those things so like at first it was like it had these combination all these weird things and I'm like is is this fucking Scott fucking with me like is he fucking with us like <laughs> how the fuck how what the is this even a thing because like I tried to look it up through YouTube and all these other places I couldn't find it I could not find that album anywhere except for the link that Jeremy provided so I'm just like yeah what no, in the fuck they pulled uh, it used to be on YouTube they had the whole thing but then they put it on Bandcamp um, yeah a lot of these kids get fucked. Like we've had the days and days guy on Jesse. I've had him on my other podcast and like, they don't even own the official fucking uh, YouTube channel. So oh. yeah, I think, I think people steal the shit and try Cause these are legitimately rail yard ghosts. They live on the street and that's why like half of the songs aren't the greatest in the world. Is because when they were going, man, they were making like an album every three fucking months, right? They're just playing on the street, panhandling and churning out music. 
Yeah, the, but the ones that I did like, I really fucking liked. Yeah, they, that's, uh, that's how I looked at it. I uh, what I've been doing for part of the research for the show is obviously listening to the albums multiple times, but like my first time around, every time I'm always playing uh, Fallout New Vegas. Okay. Because I've already done most of the main quest, so I just wander around, do side quest stuff, lo- you know, discover locations and stuff like that. And I'll just listen to it, and then like all like with yours, like there's a whole the uh, you know mark across the top of of the track numbers that okay track number this track number this track number this track number this, and then I listen to it again, and then I was like okay well, I I can't I can't rank these. Because it's like, <laughs> it's got such an equal amount of things that I either I don't like in that song. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it just pulls it from the fucking jaws of defeat. And it's like, okay, I fucking, you sold me on this track. It goes on the list. Fucking a lot yeah. of it had to do, go ahead. No, 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 you go. I was going to say a lot of it had to do with that, that guttural, that the acoustic gutturals and then like the fucking crazy you know, black metal style guitar playing on an acoustic guitar. It's like, what the fuck is this shit? What's going on here? <laughs> well, yeah, no, that's like, uh, you know, cause I don't know, back when we were on the road and these people are as old as I am. So like they, you know, YouTube wasn't a thing back when I yeah. became an adult and was like 17 transitioning. But uh, when they finally got on YouTube, they have so many people So you have people who grew up listening to country and then, you know, for whatever reason, they were just like, I'm going to jump on that freight train and see where the fuck it takes me. And then you have the people who like, you know, grew up in the inner city, maybe listened to rap. Uh, You should definitely check it out. They cover rap songs, probably their most famous song on YouTube. A lot, a lot of fun, man. A lot of fun. Yeah, I'll definitely go back and find, see what I can find now that I know who the artist is. You have to, I'll send you the link to the Christmas album. It's Rail Yard Ghosts, Crusty Christmas. Oh, Best yeah. I think it's Christmas album ever. I think that might actually be on YouTube Music, if I'm not mistaken. There's some, there, I know there's one album on YouTube Music. I, uh, I haven't, that one is only on like archive. So is it to, yeah you have to go to like the fucking archive to get that one it's That's not good. even on like there's you know they're uh on flail records and then they have their personal I wonder, which, um, I wonder what their album is that's on the youtube music then because i could have swore uh that it was shit, that one. i don't know the name of that one that one was a i mean they got like if you go to flail records or Bandcamp, they've got like fucking 20 albums within seven years dude it's jesus but you know when you panhandle for money and make music all day you run through the music some of it's good some of it's bad yeah yeah Where's it's almost Jeremy? like uh you know i don't know he just said he'd be right back and then just kind of fucked off into the uh into the ether <laughs> <laughs> well i am glad there are pee breaks in this show Oh yeah, if you got to do it, if you got to do, you got to do what you got to do. I was um I was on the biggest flat earth. I'm not a flat earther. I know Jeremy <laughs> makes me have to be a flat earther. <laughs> but I I was on the biggest flat earth podcast and um this dude's Christian, so he's, you know, like he's a Christian flat earther. My sister's a non-religious flat earther. That's how I started listening to this shit. But uh, since he's Christian, I couldn't take piss breaks because I was drinking beer, right? He didn't do video communication. So I'm like fucking filling cans and I ruined a cup forever. (laughs) But he's like asking me questions and I'm like, yeah, how does that (laughs) math work? (laughs) Oh, Jesus Christ. I couldn't even, I, I mean, it's for me, it's like, I'm more interested in the things that are more like not necessarily physical, but like something you can literally reach out and get a hold of. 
like Operation Northwoods uh-huh. or any of those white papers. Yeah. Yeah. Not to, not to say that I'm not willing to listen to some type of discussion about the more out there theories, but as Ooh, far as like – that wasn't even a theory, right? I know. Well, <laughs> it, it, it actually was for quite a while. No, no, no. I'm not talking about Oliver North with uh, Iran Contra. Oh, Operation okay. Operation Northwoods was a uh, was uh, something that was agreed upon by Kennedy's Joint Chiefs of Staff, where they were going to use false flag attacks on uh, military installations and uh, and airliners to get us into war with Cuba. Oh, okay, yeah, when they were going to shoot down the plane in Cuba. I mean, they eventually did the Gulf of Tonkin, right? They did, yeah, they did pull off the Gulf of Tonkin, yeah. Leave it to me walking away with you two on my show when it turns into a conspiracy talk while I'm gone. (laughs) Those were, like, legitimate plans. Like, that was, I mean, it's not conspiracy anymore. Well, no, the conspiracy behind Northwoods was a whole, like, the government would never plan an attack against its own people. (laughs) Yeah. But they did. But they did. Oh, they did. I, I get it. With so flat Earth too. It's like you know, even even if we found out the Earth was flat, like, what the what fuck are, are we gonna, gonna do about do? it? Yeah. Yeah. What do we do about it? <laughs> like, oh, okay. okay. Well, you yeah, know, let's out. let's yeah. fucking waste all our time and resources arguing over this specific thing when there are literally a litany of other fucking yeah. serious issues that need to be addressed. It's like. You know, it's the house being on fire, and you're being like, you know what I really need to do right now? Change Nothing. the oil in my car. <laughs> yeah, I got to change the oil in my car. Never mind. Never mind everything else. I there the other day. You're yeah, right? I don't know. I mean, they, I think they just get so – nice guy. Super nice guy. Yeah, well, that is – I mean, that, yeah. There and they stop believing in anything the government says. Yeah. But the flat earth thing, it's like, okay, cool. There's a firmament above us. It's flat. Who gives a, like, who cares? What's going on, Shannon? Glad to see you watching. Uh, now, as far as rail yard ghosts goes. Yeah, what's your fucking thoughts? Let's go. Come on. I, I don't think kinda... Jeremy's going to have a favorable view on this at all. See? <laughs> ex- see? Exact opposite. Once again, you go underestim- <laughs> Once again, you go under as underestimate my musical value here. I actually found it okay. I'm not okay. I found some bit enjoyable. Some of it I was just like, what the fuck is this? But and I, I mean I literally showed my <laughs> I, I literally showed my fucking co-worker today because he's a huge metalhead music head like I am. And like he He's like ten years older than me, and he like he puts on video of them like playing on a str- on the street corner, and he's like, "Look at these dirty hippies! They need to shave their fucking armpits." That's what John Buckles thinks. When Jesse came on our show, he was gonna start some shit, but he didn't. So, uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's uh, their music's not bad. Like some of the songs, I freaking love, and you'll get to when I get to my top five, you'll hear that. But it's just like. I mean, I, I have a fucking list for this album. It's not like it's just like, oh, here's five I had to pick. But it's just, it was a lot. It was it was just different. Like, every song was a little bit different. And I don't like the fucking woman screaming part. Like, that part to me is just like, what the fuck is this shit? Oh, <laughs> it's like, man, dude, I, I was going to pick Harem Scarum. That's a fucking old cross band from the 90s out of Portland. It's all women. You would have hated mm. that. No, I got nothing <laughs> We've, we've demonstrated our love for women on this show before. We did a whole episode of Dedicated Women Who Could Sing Great. But it just, I don't know. I just, I really don't. I mean, there's def, there's four songs I definitely got hearted and put in my Spotify like songs list. So obviously I didn't hate it. You got it on Spotify? Yeah. Yeah. It's on, that CD's on Spotify. A, a couple of, the, a lot of their CDs are on Spotify. Oh, shit. Yeah. I mean, I guess you got to pay them or something. I go to Bandcamp. Uh, I'm surprised uh, you guys don't do Bandcamp. I do Spotify. I always find pretty much everything on Spotify, except except some comedy albums. But I don't I don't do Spotify Premium, so I usually don't. I try to I try to stay away from Spotify as much as I can. I had to as listen far to as your like for CDs, it was like yeah. it and shit. Yeah, it does. Yeah, if you don't pay for Spotify Premium, it does a shuffle. Yeah, it's fuck. It's fucking bullshit. Podcasts the, are still good, but that yeah, podcasts are fine, but 
yeah, if you're trying to listen to an album for, you know, research reasons, it fucking it's like, oh, you want oh, you want to listen to this thing? Well, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I pay for Spotify. It's because for podcast and for fucking music. It's I was using Apple, but they didn't have one app you could use in your Android, so I switched to Spotify. And hey, yeah, I mean April, that makes sense. Hey April, what's going on? And yes, everything does require a woman's touch. I 100 percent agree. Everything. 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 But, I don't um, know. Does Guar? Actually, oh, they did. Oh, they, the, did. They, did. Does, they did. Does Guar pre 1990? Uh I do believe that they did. Okay. I would have to look up what. I would have to look up when "Don't Need a Man" came out, but yeah, yeah, they had they had a they had a female character in the band. I'm I was gonna say I'm I'm, I'm like I'm like Morty did so if Gordon Morty did the next best thing when they came out so, but they actually focus they they feature the female now very often on songs, but. Guar was a like I had not that album came out in 2004. I don't think I've heard Guar since 2004, dude. I oh, dude, I went watching the shit on the TV, like you know, oh, like, yeah, Square TV. That was cool. I, yeah, I went and saw him a bunch of times. It was such a great, it was such a great time. Yeah, I bet live that's a fucking oh, good, it's fucking insane. Time. All right, well. Scott, of your own of your own album, what were your top five songs? Okay, it's starting in my top five, going five to one, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay, so uh Minor Flail, The Summoning, that was number one, and I know that's just like the intro, not entirely a skit, but you know, the fucking lyrics, it just brings me back to being 17 again, so rolling 13 deep. I love that shit. And then, uh, you know, the chanting. That's like drunk speak all over the world, right? That's what we do with our friends. We start (laughs) chanting fucking songs at the end of the night. So that was my number five. Oh, you you keep going. You go through your Oh, I keep going. I keep going. Okay. And number four is Warriors of Light. So uh, this is the perfect fucking song to sit by a river and fish and drink beers. Um, yeah, see, when Chanty sits by a river, he's just tell- he's just sitting there with his gray beard telling kids stories. You know how that's you know how you know that's a lie. You ain't gonna catch me out. You ain't gonna catch me outside. <laughs> how about that? No, man. Number the the fucking warriors of light sitting by a river it's got that like perfect just chill rhythm fucking cooking some food on a fire and drinking some beers i think that's fucking perfect for that and then uh number three burning down the landlord's house even though it's ironic right it's whatever <laughs> right you to fucking do right um yeah it's just a solid sing-along to anthem it is and then uh, Fear Not would be number one. I think that song just like invokes anarchism no matter which way you want to do it. It, you know, just live free, stop worrying about the shit. And then the chanting at the end fucking brings it all together for me. Mm-hmm. And my number one, Mad Mulligan. Come on now. We're getting into Halloween. It's almost October. Crusty kid spelled Odin. That shit's fucking awesome, dude. That was the first song I heard off of this album. And that shit. You gotta listen to the lyrics. Oh, I I did. I, I listened to the C twice today actually, because I wanted to actually hear what they're saying. But love that but fucking see, song, dude. You'll see when I get to mine. But uh Chancy, what were your top five? I'm dying to hear this. So, like I was telling Malachi, man. I I have eight songs all together, but ah, I got nine. Suck it. No, none of them are none of them are in, are in any particular order. Oh. All all of these songs are songs that I that like impacted me in a fashion that I was like, man, I like that. 
there i couldn't i couldn't put something i like i can't be like oh this is number five because it's like there's so many elements of certain songs that are like i just i wasn't feeling it and then all of a sudden something happens and i'm like okay this one goes on the list but uh uh call of the void was one of them uh march of the ogres uh grandsons of pullman porter that was pretty all right that's a, yeah that's a good fucking story yeah i like that uh read between the times was pretty good uh burning down the landlord's house <laughs> uh my, my oh me uh careless and then uh minor fl- minor flail the summoning was pretty fucking kick-ass as well yeah i, I like when they changed the the fucking go to the spanish and then chanting Just yeah the hook, dude I mean, yeah, I mean, this this CD basically to me was like the biggest acid trip ever because it's like literally jumping from one nightmare sequence to the next almost in a way. <laughs> and it's just like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, I literally had to, and I had to keep checking to see if the songs change at certain points because I'm like, did it go to the next song? Oh no, it's still the same 16 minute song. Yeah, right. <laughs> did you and think like, I was fucking with you like Chancey did? No, no, oh, no. Okay. I, I, I'm like, I knew right away. I'm like, as soon as I, as soon as I heard snippets of it when I was going to pick my CD the first time he gave it to me, I was like, this is Scott. I'm like, this is so <laughs> fucking Scott. I could, I fucking know this. This is Scott. I'm like, he, I knew he was going to give me some weird shit like this or he was going to give me some like 90s ska punk stuff. Like, no, it was either this or Diane Word. So uh, I would have loved that. That would have been so awesome. <laughs> but so yeah, I'm like you, Chancey. I was able to remember mine. It took some renumbering here and there, but I did get nine all together because there are four honorable mentions for damn sure. My own me was my first honorable mention. Highway or Hangman Part One was the next honorable mention because that song's freaking awesome. I mean, that's just that's like like a lot of these remind me of pirate songs, like in a way, like that's yeah, just, dude. Like, Crusty that's kids are pirates. Ride the fucking train town to town. Well, I mean, I, I swear to God, I, that's why I thought you, like you were part of this band or something at some point. Like, I'm like, is Scott like jumping trains from Carnival to Carnival while he's in this Not band? Like, yet, what the fuck? Dude. Not <laughs> yet. It's a retirement plan. Oh, you're going back to the Carnival for retirement. Okay. JNT, calm down. I know he's Carnival folk. I, calm down. I know. He's just looking at me like a circus guy. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just keeping my Hatred. mouth shut. Hatred. I, I'm just keeping my mouth shut. I've already yeah. admitted that you guys had talent. And we're just a bunch of tweakers. I uh, that and that's why we're cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my third honorable mention was Careless, and my last honorable, my last honorable mention was Mad Mulligan's Cauldron Conjuration Part One. I didn't like Part Two. Oh. I didn't like part one. dude, Part One, fucking solid song. It you is. should cast that spell. That Number five. Number my number five was Call of the Void because the speech in it reminds me of a certain Nightwish speech in a twenty-one minute song I made chance to listen to. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> uh, and number four was Warriors of Light because that song is fucking incredible. Yeah, that one's good. And then number three was the March of the Ogres, which I could have swore Queen did a song called that too. <laughs> oh no, that was Battle of the Ogres, not March of the Ogres. But uh, March of the Ogres was an awesome fucking song. I mean, I love anything based in folklore, as Scott damn well knows. So March of the Ogres was a good song. And it's funny. I feel like Scott brought this album for certain reasons for me, just like there's reasons I brought mine for him. But This is one of my favorite albums, dude. I'm not saying saying mine's not either, but... (laughs) The first Bad Brains album? Mm. Like, it's up there, dude. All right, well, number two was Burning Down the Landlord's House. So that's the first CD in this song. This, that's the first song on the CD I really like fell in love with. Like it took a couple tracks to get to that one. And once I got to that one, I was like, all right, this actually isn't bad. I'm like, this song's pretty good. That reminded me of like a p- more punk Dropkick Murphy song in a way. But, and then number one for me, which no one has mentioned this song yet. And I'm like, what the fucking fuck? But my number one song was Odin Saga. Cause that literally is a Norse mythology like tale in that song it, it's a real norse mythology tale i knew it word for word before they said the next word like 
it, it's perfect. I fucking loved it. That's, that's the song I sent to my friend. And I'm like, you got to listen to this because he loves like songs about mythology like I do. So you got to listen to Blackbird Rom. They're way more into the fucking Odin legends. Same full oh. funk shit. <laughs> There's a lot of groups that are into the fucking Norse legends. <laughs> There's a lot of fucking groups that are into Norse legends. It's good songwriting material. But, I mean, Led Zeppelin fucking did it, for God's sake. Yeah, they were pretty big into Aleister Crowley, too. The weirdos. Uh, yeah. No, nothing wrong with being into Aleister, Aleister Crowley. We talked about this last this week on Global Strangers. I mean, yeah. Aleister Crowley was a partier and a fucking... He knew you how like to have a good time. sleeping with goats and children. He's your dude. Yeah, well... <laughs> you, you, you could hang out with somebody now, like everything they do. You think all the guys hanging out with Charles Manson were there to fucking because they wanted to kill and cause chaos? No, they just wanted all the fucking bitches he left behind. But that's my theory. But all right. Well, speaking of bitches left behind, Chancy, let's go to your CD. Oh, damn. <laughs> that sounds like fighting words. Uh, yeah, he's he's getting him he's getting him in quick and early so that way cuz I mean I'm pretty sure he understands the fucking the murder train that's coming. <laughs> fucking I don't think I knew actually cuz Oh, uh, fucking Somebody liked a certain somebody last time they were on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you know you ever have one of them times where you got real drunk and you slept with the uh with the ugliest motherfucker at the party and then you wake up the next day and you realize that you made a terrible mistake. That's kind of what happened here. Except for, you know, the first one was the night before, and this album was this morning. Okay, so, well, Chancy, what, what have I told you about telling our, our meat story on the fucking show? Jesus. Yeah, I think you <laughs> should put some Vaseline on your butthole tonight, Jeremy. Woo! Oh, it did. Uh, Reverse it. So, I, uh, I actually chose uh, Guar's War Party. I scream out your name. Or at least what I think you're called. Fate's finger gives me the blame. If you saw my tears, I know you'd be appalled. A first ball of tape. As I eat our baby, I'm thinking of you. You're not here to feed me. So I ain't our child. I wish we It's, I mean, I love fucking Guar in the, in the first place. It's there. It's... The the shtick behind the band, like the whole storyline, the way they incorporate actually making music with the storyline, just it's fucking it's primo. And I was listening to a couple of the tracks, getting a little feel for it when he when Jeremy first you know showed me what you were what you had sent, and then I listened to the shit that Jeremy sent, and then like I was like, oh okay, well. Let's go to the old handy dandy shuffle button and fucking right up, right up out the gate was one of the songs off my list. And I was like, oh, OK, fucking I, I've, I picked a live album of theirs, but I haven't actually picked an album album. Fucking it works. So I picked it. <laughs> all, all, the, all the meanwhile, while he pictures odorous Ungers is phallus just swinging in front of him and he's just like, ah. I love the I mean, interviews, dude. Oh, they they're show so up cool. in the speedo and the big foam suits. Like, it was badass. I remember when uh, Odorous would uh, star on the Red Eye show on Fox News, just fucking talking trash. Just that's all he did was just talk shit. In general, just in general, no nobody was safe. But. Uh, this I honestly, if you listen to like when you're listening to it to, and, and understanding when it came out, it's really like a it's really kind of like a clap back to the to the times that that were that were there, talking about all types of crazy shit, the shit that was going on in the Middle East with the wars. Yeah, and well, not right when it started, but that's when I would have been drafted. So, well, I mean, oh three would have been when we went into Iraq and shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very political album. It definitely is. I mean, they do a lot of subversive political stuff while oh. doing their, while doing while doing their "I want to kill all humanity" shtick thing. Oh, fucking... if you trust, yeah. If you if you listen to the fucking live from Mount Fuji album, they definitely have the skits. Definitely prove that shit. Oh yeah, when I first saw them, it was back in 08. They had like life size 
you know, people dressed up like uh, Hillary, Obama, and John McCain, and they just fucking <laughs> like they decapitated one of them. I think they tore Hillary's tits off, and I think they fucking pulled uh, Obama's fucking mandible off. But the sh- the shtick is they always shoot fake blood and stuff, like whether it's mm-hmm. alien blood or human blood, or if Odorous is wearing his cod piece, it's like fucking fake semen. It would be awesome to see him live. Like if I if I got to see what you guys picked first, I probably would have picked Gigi Allen hated by a nation, and then we would have had two two groups in speedos. So <laughs> what do you mean speedos? Gigi Allen fucking went nuts out. <laughs> Yeah, when he started. Yeah. I mean, and trust me, it is awesome to see him live. I mean, chance I'll tell you, especially if you're in behind the only girl in the audience. In the front row, not the audience. Oh, yeah. The yeah. I, uh, there, like, it was literally, I was third row, but it might as well have been first row because the two people in front of me were literally, like, chest high short. And he come out with this giant cod piece and I knew what was about to happen. And I'm kind of looking down and around and I noticed that there is not a single woman in the front row, except for the one directly in front of me. Oh, shit. And I'm just like, Oh shit. So he starts just unleashing the fury on this poor girl. And she, it's just ricocheting over her head onto her boyfriend. And I'm like this, you know, I'm just like, it's not real. It's not real. It's not real. It's not. He's fucking so stoked. He's like, Odorous came on my girlfriend. I'm like, I'm just like, oh my God. Oh my God. It's fine. This is fine. You don't wear your good clothes to a guar show. This is understood. And and Chance is just behind him like, Odorous came on me. Odorous came it's, on oh. me. Like crying at the same time. but A little bit of splashback, you know? Did you save any? Like when they die, dude, that might be worth some money. Well, Odorous already, di- uh, yeah, Odorous already died. The lead singer died. They're they're still touring. They just got a new singer. I haven't went and seen him since, unfortunately. But see, dude, yeah, damn, that'd be worth some money. Yeah, you could you could sell on eBay. Odorous is semen, five thousand dollars a vial. Yeah, d- dude, they were selling Disneyland, fucking. Uh, Mount Splash or whatever the hell the ride was, water when they Splash Mountain. Splash really? Mountain, yeah. Jesus Christ, that's stupid. Yeah, why would you want yeah. that water? It's got some more germs in it than a fucking eight pool. Well, and like, who the hell tells it's from that water, right? You just film it right. Someone just dumping dumping some bowling springs into a fucking tube, like it's Splash Mountain. Just get. It'd have to have the water. official provenance. Yeah, I guess yeah. they do kind of dye it a little blue, so you'd have to work some, yeah. some fucking food color in there. But and I mean, just get could, that get that blue toilet water. You could there test you it. Go. You could you could test it. You just gotta fucking hold the black light up to it and see how much shit sparkles. Because you know, in that water, there's definitely some throw up and shit. But ugh. and all right, well, as our guest Malachi, what did you think of Guar? Guar. <laughs> So, like I said, I had not heard this album. At least it said on Spotify it came out in 2004. Yeah. And it probably was like 2004 to 2002, the last time I'd even heard Guar. And that shit was fucking awesome back in the day. Like when you'd get super stoned and like (laughs) fucking listen or watch the shit was even better because you're like, what the fuck is going <laughs> on, dude? Um, but yeah, no, like Guar has a bunch of really good song. Like it's got that fucking thrash feel to it. I'm just not really part of the whole like melodic metal stuff. But like if you if you listen to the thrash part of it, it's fucking on point. Yeah. Well. See, I'm the opposite of you, Scott. You I like, like the melodic shit. I love the melodic metal. I that's my metal. That's that's my chance. He knows that's my metal genre. And like, boy, don't I know. He's had to listen to some, huh? He's in therapy. So me. much, so much, but I, so much. The thrash stuff, I really. Don't, I mean, certain songs I could do with thrash stuff in, but some of the songs on this album, I'm just like, and eh, they were better with the skits opening them up, but. 
I mean, like, uh, bring back the bomb. I didn't even like this time around. I liked it better with the fucking skit of, of fucking uh, Osama Bin Laden before it. So, no, man, I could imagine seeing them fucking live and like during those thrash parts. There are some good songs in there where, like, like I've never been to a Guar show. I don't know if people start picking up the chains and we get into this like hardcore rhythm shit doing karate in the middle and then like <laughs> right back into a circle pit, but fucking like. They've got they've got some shit you could dance to, you know what I'm saying? It it was pretty big. It was hey, what's up? Yeah, it's honestly a basic kind of mosh pit thing more than anything. It's like circle pit, mosh pit, no hardcore dancing or anything like that. Just fucking everybody slipping on the thing. Everybody slipping on the fake blood and sperm. Mostly, yeah. Mostly Most everybody's. Maybe. Go ahead. No, you go. I'm sorry. I was gonna say, yeah, mostly it's kind of limited movement because of all the. They basically just hose everybody down to keep them cool because everybody's just so packed up to the, packed up to the fucking stage. It just gets hot, so they hose you down. I bet you, and, if fucking like before they were big, those shows would have been fucking awesome, dude. Oh, dude, like, been fucking insane. You go to like a you know a club where there's sixty fucking people there, and there's these people out in fucking costumes and shit. And the music, oh, Dave Bra- like Dave Brock is a genius. Was it's, a genius. It's, it's like a it's like a green jelly concert. They fucking throw out like all these freaking foam ass masks, for, like big ass body suits for you to put on, and like the mosh shit becomes insane. Like these people can't even see where the fuck they're going. They're just like running into everybody. It's hilarious. <laughs> And the, and meanwhile, the lead singer's just up on stage tripping down to his fucking boxers. But because why not? And making you yell exactly. at his band sucks. And making you yell at his band sucks. But yeah, Jeremy, fuck. you took a like twenty minute sabbatical. I've had about four or five beers. I got to piss real quick. Oh uh, well, I'll, I'll just go on Chanty's album while you uh, go ahead. Okay, cool. Take me like thirty seconds. Or clear down. Yeah, I wasn't, <laughs> trust me, it was no, it was no sabbatical, but it was war. But um, yeah, gore. I do like him. I do love gore. You know that gore is the shit. I fucking, I enjoyed this fucking album. I did. I I enjoy it. But I mean, it's just they actually. It's one of the few bands I prefer live. I mean, yeah, you can understand yeah. more what they're you can understand more what they're saying on this CD, which makes it a little better because you guys can understand the lyrics. But because it's not the fucking guitar turned to like fifteen and the lyrics are like five. But it it was it was a good album. I mean, I'm kind of curious to see what else War has done. Sounds Lots of stuff. Oh, Lots of stuff. I know. We, the, I know. Their jazz their jazz song is pretty fucking kick ass. <laughs> Some Dave Matthews War, all right. Oh, it's not Dave Matthews by any means. It's it's literally like uh it's it yeah, it, it's it's a it's a whole thing. I'll bring that one someday and you'll be like, what the fuck? <laughs> but I enjoyed it. I mean, of course the whole time I'm picturing Odor Sungress in front of you and I'm just laughing the whole time knowing I'm gonna get to bring that up in the show and make you tell the story again, which of course yeah. is gonna be all the more pleasant, but yeah, I course. suppose. Gore is not bad. I I don't I can do, I can do gore. I can do gore. It's a lot better than other bands you brought on. I'd rather do gore than fucking Soundgarden again. So, sorry guys, that never happens when I'm podcasting. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 How many times in fucking Global Strangers will someone be like Scott? Scott, and I'm looking away for a second. I'm just like, he's taking a piss break again. Well, goddamn, <laughs> the show goes like two hours, dude. You got to take. Yeah, I, I know we we need to have a talk about that actually, but um. So, could you answer what were your top five of your album? Uh, so for me, uh, number five was You Can't Kill Terror. Uh, number four was Womb with a View. And uh, number three was War Party. Uh, number two is Crostica. Mm-hmm. And for me, number one, any opportunity that I have to make it number one is always going to be Bring Back the Bomb always that song is fucking dude not only is it a great way to start this album just on its just on its own but just the lyrics of that song hit 
so much harder than the fucking song itself. It's just like, holy shit. Like when they're talking about the whole, you know, uh, making the bet about whether or not it would ignite the atmosphere or the part like halfway through the song where he's like, you know, and while we're at it, let's go nuke Tibet. Let's vaporize the oceans with glee. Saving the sail, saving the whales an agenda for some, nuking them sits well with me. Like that's so fucking awesome. Like fuck. Well, you know, that fuck was, the way. That was a real concern, right? Like they yeah, they the they yeah blow up the fucking atmosphere. Yeah, they did a mathematic check, you know, because they were concerned that there is a possibility that it would have a chain reaction to ignite the atmosphere. And they did it anyway. Well, you know. Yeah, I mean. Government does what the government does, but uh, I mean, bring back back bring back the bombs at the same without Osama bin Laden like getting his head ripped off in the beginning. I'm just saying. Yeah, but without being able to see it, it really it doesn't have any point to it. Oh, I, I could hear it and I could picture it in my head. So, but Scott, what were your top five Guar songs? From yeah, I had some overlap with Chancy there. I got uh, number five, "Womb with a View." So the the start of this fucking song is pretty awesome, dude. But then, like, the ballads, just, you know, if they cut all that shit out, this would be number two. Nice. (laughs) And then uh, number four, I got Crostica. Nice. Uh, The lyrics in this one are pretty fun. I I like the lyrics from that one. And then number three, I got War Party. Um... This one, the beginning and the fucking end are just like, I wish they were a small band and I saw them in a small club. And I guarantee even that, like, you know, middle ballad part, you'd get some hardcore dancing in there. But everything sounds different when they're, you know, in a studio making the shit sound perfect. Yeah. Um, Number two, I've got the... Reganator? What? Yeah, Reganator. Yeah, Reganator. the Reganator. Yeah, like the fucking like President Reagan. Yeah. So this yeah. one <laughs> Yeah. This one's fucking fast and it does have those like hardcore breakdowns where we're picking up the chains and doing karate in the circle. I fucking like that shit. And then <laughs> uh my number one bonus plan, dude. This is straight yeah. to the point. Minute long song, fucking get it done, son. Long enough for me to be in there. I I hope you don't say it to your wife, but I mean, Jesus. Yeah, 30 seconds for my wife. Come on now. (laughs) Uh, Chance is like 30 seconds. That's not even long enough for me to get my pal out. (laughs) But uh, there's a whole thing on that about that on a previous bracket. But number six is. For me, because I had a, I had one honorable mention for four. Oh, yeah, man. my honorable mention was the bonus plan because it is just a made of amazing fucking tunage. And I actually gave yeah, Chance, I gave a non-lyrical song a fucking number in this one. You're lucky, but yes, jump for joy. Number five was Cross Sticker because was that in the live album or not? I can't remember. Yep, it was. Okay, I thought so. I thought I heard that name before, <laughs> but. Tell Vito, shut the fuck up. But number four was Womb with a View because that song is fucking hilarious and that's my kind of song. Number three was You Can't Kill Terror because that's a fucking amazing song and that reminds me of like what Lordy would do. And then, no, my top two, no one fucking mentioned. I'm like, what the fucking shit? This is, that, this is too much of a trend tonight. But <laughs> number two was Fistful of Teeth because that, that song was the lyrics in that song are fucking incredible. <clears throat> and then number one was Bone Snapper, which is the best wrestling name yeah. ever. That was all right. <laughs> yeah. You picked it for the name? Like that, that would have been the best wrestling name ever. Bone Snapper. <laughs> that should have been the that should have been fucking Kevin Nash's name in Spider Man. Yep. Fuck Bone Saw. You mean fucking Randy Savage, you goddamn mouth breathing mongoloid. <laughs> Okay, with your little rage in there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Like, buddy. what the fuck? Kevin Nash? How do you mix up Kevin Nash and Macho Man Randy Savage? They're literally two feet fucking apart in height, man. 
Come here, shut up. <laughs> I can hear his bitching in the background. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd be, that's a, and Bro Snapper was just an amazing song. Like I love songs like that. And actually, you might have. It's very similar to music we might be doing in a bracket pretty soon. Just saying, I'm not exactly going to pick war, but I'm saying there might be something coming up soon. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> so, are you doing the bracket on this show? Uh, which no, 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 no. We do, we do, we only do music brackets on this show. Well, you or said music. you were doing a music bracket. Which one are you talking about? I talked to you about like three brackets in the last week. <laughs> you were just talking about it. Oh, oh, yeah, it'll be on this show. Yeah, it'll be on this show. Okay, and, cool. It'll be on this show at, at some point. But uh, well, it's that time. The best always get safe for last in the show usually. Like, oh, oh god damn it. I thought I thought we were done. Yeah. I thought we fucking made it through on this fucking son of a bitch. Why, why All did right. my record go first, dude? Guest or well the guest we yeah, saving, the guest I thought we were saving the best for the last though. The Come guest on, always goes that. first. And Jeremy <laughs> likes to, you know, live his delusions of grandeur by thinking. I'm not sure what you yeah. to talk to, but I mean, if it's me, there's always spirits in my garage behind me, if that's what you're seeing. Just saying. But I've been told before. But I don't know who you're talking to. It might be the shower person behind Chansey. Or the sober truth is I have no bloody regrets. That is a hell of a name, son. I I come with the best ones. What can I say? What can I say? But So, let's see. The album I decided to bring tonight. See, I know Scott very well. At this point, and when he was bringing his album, I'm like, all right, I hear Southern, I hear a little bit of country to some degree. I'm like, all right, all right, I know what I gotta do. And I'm like, and I believe I've mentioned at least three tracks off this album on our show at different points because of the topics. So I was like, you know what? I have my fellow paranormal podcaster on our show tonight. I'm gonna bring a fucking CD about the one of the fucking. Knights of Hell, Abaddon, and that's exactly what I did. I brought Boondocks' Abaddon, one of the fucking best Boondocks albums he ever did. And I couldn't, I couldn't look them in the eyes. They, they kept knocking at my door. She looked up, and all I could see were her eyes, those black eyes. So dark outside, can't see a thing Through the cracks of this window pane Shadows seem like they come alive Every noise fucking with my brain I'm paranoid, think about last night Can't shake it off, burned in my sight Unexplained is an understatement What I saw, it wasn't right Knock at the door, kicked it off Went to answer, the air got thick Light started flicking on and off My heart felt heavy and my soul grew sick Two little kids just standing there Dressed like folks from way back when Didn't look up, just started asking Steel, something like a scene from Silent Hill. No light, just an empty shell. Eyes blacker than a defense pit of hell. This, there's so much good content in this CD, and it's actually his number one listened to song on Spotify is on this CD with over 14 million, or actually 17 million uh, plays so far. So, I mean, this CD has merit to it, and it's it literally was the best CD Boondocks ever did. It was right before he left Psychopathic to go join Twisted Label, but as you can tell by the people on the songs, but I fucking love this CD and I had to bring it because well, we'll get to more why in this when I actually get to my top. We'll say five for now, but but Boondocks fucking killed it on this album completely and touched a lot of paranormal topics and that's why I brought it. So. Yeah, yeah. Boondocks definitely killed it. Most importantly, my fucking will to live. I thought I killed that years ago. No, no, no. You can't keep a good grife down. Good grife. But uh, Malachi, what did you think of Boondocks? Well, I I did kind of like the... I'm not a big country fan. I do like it in my rail yard ghosts. I, it's probably like most of my picks. Um... This is like a juggalo band, right? It's a juggalo rapper, yes. It's a juggalo rapper, yes. 
Well, you got to talk to Cherry because she's a she's a juggalo. Oh, I trust me, I can pick up on that. The fucking damn matter. Um. Oh, yeah, Chance, no, you would, I mean, you, would, you, would some, you would like Cherry. You would like Cherry. There's some cool shit in there. I got five of them. There, yeah. there was a song I would listen to after we're done with this podcast. Not to be like an asshole or anything, <laughs> just like totally different uh, vibes of music, I think. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's unleash the Kraken. Chante, whip it out. Dude. Fake out coming in three, two. I honestly can't, un- I can't fathom the fucking, dude, it really makes me think of the Peter Steele quote from the back of the typo negative album, fucking Bloody Kisses, which is, Fucking never mistake lack of talent for artistic genius or musical genius. And somebody, somebody got way too fucked up at a goddamn meeting at a fucking record label. And they're like, this shit's the fucking bee's knees. Fucking dude. Like I like, I kind of half ass like the first one. This one is just like. Okay, let's ride the same fucking let's let's ride this fucking train until the wheels fall off, it catches on fire, we fucking derail, we cause a chemical spill, we fucking wreck into a whole fucking busload of orphans and fucking nuns and just, you know, fist fuck the entire population. Audibly speaking, of course. This fucking wretched piece of fucking audible bile is brought to you by none other than fucking shitbag deluxe fucking productions fucking fist fuck my fucking dead grandmother what the fuck like for fuck's sake dude I had to listen to this thing three fucking times just to find five fucking songs that I was like you know what I'm going to go here. I did, I even tried. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do the whole, oh, the intro is my number one song. Because, I, you know, Jeremy's going to be expecting that at this point. But the sad part is, is that it literally is the only option I fucking had. Is this how it normally goes between you two? No, not usually. No. Not, like, when I don't like something, I don't hold back. For Jeremy, I'll be polite with the with the guest. If it's not something I'm particularly into, I'll try to find something nice to say about it. Oh, dude, I'd like you to rip into mine, dude. <laughs> this is fun. I. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I had to listen to it five times, I would stab myself in the ear with fucking sticks. After the second time, because I, uh, you know. Oh, God, I really wish I would have stabbed myself in the ears this fucking time, but I had to be able to talk to you guys, so I got to be able to hear. You'll so are you, but, do you do the Juggalo stuff, Chansey? So, yes and no, mostly no. Um, I like I like a lot of their older stuff. <clears throat> like, I enjoyed some of their stuff when I was younger, but now that I'm, you know, an adult... <laughs> well, they're dead, but thanks, Jamie. That's real sweet of you to say. So, <laughs> but like, uh, I, you know, like their old stuff. Yeah, I, I, I definitely enjoyed it growing up. But like, it's just not something that I could hang my hat on. Like Guar, I like, and they're kind of like uh, as far as far kind of absurd uh, that I would go. Mostly just because of the shtick. I love the shtick. Yeah. This stuff doesn't have a good shtick to me. It's not it's not gonna it's not gonna grab me because like all we're talking about is the worst possible things we can think of. Oh god. If I wanna fucking if I wanna catch up on current events on horrible fucking shit that's actually gone on, I'll watch a fucking like a true crime documentary. <laughs> you know? <laughs> 
So yeah. like, I, I never really under, like, I, I mean, I was at that age. I've actually tattooed like, I don't know, two or three fucking hatchet men on people. Um, is it the wrestling thing? Like, I never got into it. My well, mean, they do that too. Wrestling's always been like a smaller part of it, though. It's always been about the music first. Yeah, but the hatchet man thing, like, that's never stopped. I like, I don't have any tattoos, but if I was to ever pick a tattoo to get, the hatchet man would never even enter the, the conversation. <sighs> yeah, look at you. Look at you. Gang, I'm a gang branded dude. What do you mean? You got gang branded. Fuck you tattooed on your arm, and then when you have children, put a racing stripe across it. <laughs> that's the move, dude. That's the fucking move. Nice. See, my, my tattoo, my kids ask what it means. I just say it's the music I listen to. So <laughs> I got the but. Church of Malt Liquor tattooed on my arm. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, so I had four more mentions for my own CD. A fucking course he does. <laughs> I got some shit, dude. Like, I did get one song I would fucking listen to. Well, I'll get more into why I picked the CD as I get to some of these songs, but... I get what you you were talking about, the country thing. I get why you would... Oh, it's not even that. Shit. It, gets, got, like, it, it black gets black-eyed children and stuff happening. Well, my first number mention... It's actually a song I used to love, but I just heard it too many times now and it got old. But Psycho Symphony is a beautiful fucking song. The yeah, that's what life. happened. It is. Yeah, I'm and sure. Number, and number eight is The Sober Truth, because that song actually has like some good value behind it. Number seven is Prophet, because, I mean, that's just a creepy-ass mystical song. And then number six is Bloody Regrets, because... Big Hoodoo's verses on that song are fucking incredible. Like, I love that. I, that's, that song just speaks about life. My number five, though, is My Night. Because I love the fucking way the last song ends to go into that song. We really going to go party with Boondocks? Hell yes! Squirrels! Let's go! Like, it's fucking hilarious. Like, uh, I fucking love that song. Like, And it's ICP on it. You gotta love it. And Number four is Kikdo, because Kikdo is fucking hilarious. And I mean, yeah, it's about spousal abuse, but it's still fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's yeah. It's oh, man. <laughs> so fucking great. Let me tell you. Oh, bud. And Can got Chancey the- go before me? I'd like to hear his. <laughs> I'd like to hear his review on this album. Oh, no. That's why he ends up. He finishes it for that reason. But. <laughs> uh, and, and, and plus, you, you gotta love the fucking country as part of that song where, he, where Boondock's talking about driving on the road listening to Johnny Cash and like using all his song titles. Like, I do. It was like a words. redo of The Devil Went to Georgia. Right? Well, that's a, yeah. that was the point. That, that was the point, though. Like, they even had the fucking like viol- the violin in the back for it. But, but <sighs> number three is Betrayal because Betrayal is a fucking amazing song. And, num- and the, the top two are the reasons I really picked the CD for Scott. Because number two was Monster. Because that's a paranormal song and a half, like just about boogeymen in general. But And the fucking... Monster is actually the song that has uh, 17 million listens on, on Spotify. Like that song, it's just... I mean, people can use that song for so many... Like, People who suffer from kickdo type shit can listen to that song and kind of like have meaning to it. So, I mean, it, it could be it can have meaning for a lot of different people. And I mean, the fucking opening with the girl freaking talking and like the poem, it's like fucking chilling, kind of. And then, of course, number one was Black Eyed Kids because that's the reason I picked this album for Scott. Because on our third episode of Global Strangers, when we talked about Black Eyed Kids, I fucking said in my pop culture section. And Boondocks is is one of the only people I ever heard to do a song about black eyed kids. Which I thought the fact you were that... talking about the the fucking TV show from Adult Swim. No, not Boondocks. Not not the Boondocks. Uh. But, no, I I never even watched that shit, dude. But that's a great show. You're fucking. Oh, this is why. This is why I need a support group. Like he fucking has. Like he fucking hates everything that is good. I didn't say I hated it. I never watched it. I, I'm sure I You're like, I don't, yeah, I haven't watched it. You, I, I, 
I, I can't. I, you just, I'm you sure, have to watch it. You I'm have to sure watch I it. I would. I've seen enough commercials for it over the years watching fucking Aqua Teen and shit that it looks hilarious, but I just never had the chance to actually sit down and watch the whole series. But dude, I, uh, when I was doing my street interviews this week, it was fucking Comic Con and I was interviewing nice. like fucking Batman or something. Who the fuck was I? Uh, no, Obi Wan Kenobi. I was interviewing Obi Wan Kenobi. And I saw a fucking shake walk by, and I (laughs) wanted to like stop the fucking interview and go (laughs) run up to shake and ask him if he wanted to do one, but I wasn't an asshole. Oh my god, that's fucking hilarious. If I was drunk, I would ask Shake. I would have ditched fucking Obi-Wan Kenobi. Hey, Obi-Wan Kenobi always has the high ground, thank you. But not over Shake. Uh, yeah, or I mean, if shake. it was Meatwad, there wouldn't even be a question. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Meatwad, I'd be running the fucking ass and Russians too. Like, or Carl. Oh. Yeah, Carl. <laughs> uh, Carl, fucking uh, Aqua Teen needs to come back. They need to bring that shit back. I miss Aqua Teen so far. They just they made a movie not too long ago. They made another one. Oh, oh yeah. Really? I keep I keep meaning to check it out. I keep forgetting to exist even, but. Damn, I haven't watched that shit since my kids were, like, real small, dude. (laughs) Well, that's when it was out still, yeah. But, all right, Scott, what were your top five before I let Chansey rip through shit? Okay, so five was Monster. Four was Dope Boy. That kind of reminds me of The Neighborhood. I was going to say, I'm like, I, I figured you'd like that song. I'm not a big fan of it, but I figured you'd like it. Um... Three was the Black Eyed Kids. I really liked the part where they mentioned Silent Hill because that's one of the fucking like best yeah. horror movies ever. Uh, what do we got next? Two. Ch- 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 Chance has got some arguments for that one, but. Oh, uh, you don't like Silent Hill? Oh, no. Jesus Christ. Chancey, Chancey likes the classics like Hellraiser and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Dude, if I if I could watch Silent Hill over again for the first time in VR, that would be the shit. Um, number two, that might change it. Kickdo, Kickdo, Kickdo. Yeah, so it's like the devil went down to Georgia. It had like a good beat going on for it. You know? Looking for a wife to beat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and then number one, my night. So it was funny, good beat, and I'd probably listen to that song again. Oh, that's, a, that's definitely a drinking song, like Party with Possums and all that shit, you know? You know, if I did all this shit when I'm sober at work in bad places, I probably would have picked totally different songs if I, like, <laughs> spent the whole week drinking, listening to these fucking albums all night long. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But that was my top five. Well, chance a lot. Let her rip. Well, my number five was Psycho Syphilis. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. Number four was Bloody Regrets, as in I fucking regret ever having had to listen to this fucking piece of shit. Uh, number three was My Night, which was absolutely fucking ruined. Uh, <laughs> number two was black eyed kids more like fuck them kids fucking drown them in a goddamn crick hey don't you use fuck. bastards fucking hashtag fucking uh, I did say the uh, you know number one was the intro but at the same time I really did want to try to put something there and I put monster at number one only because it was the only song on the entire list that had a fucking discretionary label. Like, are you sure you want to listen to this? I was like, fuck yes, I do. Hey, I, I had to do that shit too. I forgot about I, that. I didn't. What was well, the song that made it have a discretionary I, label? You know, I have no fucking idea, but I tried to. I was listening for it. Yeah, I was listening for it. I was like, you know, this sounds pretty much like the rest of this piece of shit. Fucking, I don't know what's going on here. That was weird. Why? Why the fucking discrimination against this specific title? Well, you know what? It's going to the top now. Uh, I never heard of any fucking song I've listened to. I'm mad. I'm to say, okay, I want to listen to this first. I don't know. 
Yeah, but that's on like you're on Spotify on YouTube yeah, if you're listening you to it. It it'll, it'll yeah, like it does it it does it for uh, the original Rage Against the Machine album. There's like two or three songs on there where they're like, "Are you sure you want to listen to this?" It's like, "Uh, yeah, motherfucker." That's crazy, dude. Because like you know, when I get drunk enough and I start listening to Gigi Allen, it'll be like a live album of him like naked shitting on himself. No, yeah, but that. There. Fucking that that's probably something else. I mean, I'm not is it on the like official uh murder junkies like YouTube I, page? I don't fucking know, dude. I tried to have if it's... Merle come on my podcast. Like oh yeah. Fuckhead. Yeah, well, you know. I I was gonna say so big for me. Yeah, so big what? time fucking <laughs> Well, we went through three albums of three different genres completely. And I asked the users of the world, are you not entertained? You better be because this shit's free. So, <laughs> but what they, they don't have to buy you guys a Ko-Fi. Come on, get a Ko-Fi account. Have them buy you a Ko-Fi. A I don't even know what that is. A cup of coffee. It's like oh, a coffee. Three, it's a three dollar Patreon. Oh yeah, yeah. We're, we're that may be coming soon. Working on that, but we need to get back on our regularly scheduled specials and everything first before I could do that. I just literally edited our last like I had like six specials lined up to edit. So finally got all that all done. So now we can start recording the shit again finally. But coming soon. More about that in a minute. But first things first. We want to thank, of course, Malachi for coming on because it's been a fun fucking episode. And Malachi, where can they find you if they want to find you or if you want to be found? Well, I had fun, Jeremy. Curbside Chronicles for my fucking uh, street interviews about nonsense questions to a bunch of random people in the city. And then, of course, Global Strangeness with Jeremy, where there are now four people. Well, I, I don't think Michael drinks, but three of us original people getting drunk and Michael. Not anymore. Not anymore. I mean, I mean, me and Deborah are getting wasted, and everybody else is like straight edge hardcore. So that's a fun show to watch. And that's it. Or follow me on the Facebooks. I don't know if you can find them. <laughs> fucking click on Malachi. <laughs> and Ch- Chancy, where can they find you besides crying in your closet tonight, looking after the monster? Uh well, you know obviously the Facebooks the uh you know if they can, the scavenger hunt still is open if you can find me good luck, um Instagram and fucking TikTok is uh, the Red Eye Roundtable, uh X is uh, Red Eye Table. Fucking what is this X you speak of? The thing that they used to call <laughs> Twitter. Oh, okay. Yes. Soon it'll be called the Musketeers, but you could if of I get find fifty-four million dollars or billion dollars, I'm, however fucking you, much it costs. You could of course find both of your musers on Facebook, where the streams on the uncensored, unapologetic, and untamed UQ podcast collective Facebook group. You can find us on Twitter, where the streams as well, or XX Baby, as it's now called, as at Juggle the Bastard. You can also find us on Instagram under that. You can find us on Tiki Talkie as that Juggle Bastard Podcast. Yeah, I've been lacking on content there. Give me a break. And you can find us on YouTube as Maniacal Music Musings to see all our past episodes and see our beautiful faces. Well, my beautiful face. I mean, Chancy. Yeah. But you can also find us on YouTube as Blind Knowledge Network, where we stream all our shows on. Because all knowledge is blind. Until Chancy learns that Boondocks is a fucking good rapper, you fucking fucker. But it's a great show, too. Until, until next time. Yes, your users will not be here next week. Um, we will be joining the people over at I Did Not Make These Rankings Network for their weekly draft instead. But you could, we'll be back in two weeks with, I believe, the head of the Blind Knowledge Network as our guest. So fun times yeah. to come on that one. Let's see how, let's see if we can get kicked off a network in one night. But <laughs> 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 uh, but until next time, your musers are out. And remember, Watch out for those damn black eyed kids. Fuck them damn black eyed kids.
think it's gonna fall apart Always afraid that things will never get better I went from writing down rhymes to type of suicide letters Diagnosed with paranoia, you can check my prescription I'm a manic depressive, one of my many conditions I'm not a prophet or a sayer, but I'm seeing a vision My life and what's beyond it don't form with collision If ignorance is piss and I'll be void of any song Cause I don't wanna know the outcome of the day or tomorrow I just wanna hide inside my own private hell How can I ever get to heaven when so many angels fail? I'm just a human being and I'm just only being you But with eternity and judgment from another always oh, looming It's the wonder that I made it with these voices in my head With all these monsters at my window staring at me in my bed with Boondocks tonight? What? Of course, man. The Jamboree, get done! Shit, dig! We're here, buddy, with possums! Whoa! 